Hey everybody, Will Tompkins here, Tom Cruise Studios, live music in Austin with episode number six of Three Beers and a Whiskey featuring Bobby Bookout. Here's beer number two. That's a great question, Will. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't know. Um, so here's the thing. I am, well, he just now coming off of eight years of stressing this, getting it done, and I am turning the hat around, and we're going to do, I'm going to start booking stuff again. I would, in a Good. perfect world, like Bobby to start. Bookout. Booking stuff. Yeah. And I don't wear hats. But uh, I would like to hopefully uh, have a show in Austin Mitty every other month. I really want to start pinging like San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston. So if Dallas, you're in any of those cities and you know of a place that I can play, holler at your boy. Uh, Bobby Bookout Music.com. Bobby Bookout.com. Bobby Bookout. Just going to get that. <laughs> your there is another Bobby Bookout actually. This is yeah. a rapper. Yeah. I'm not even joking right now. <laughs> Lloyd Blaine, a buddy of mine at work, and was I trying to look you up and found that by accident. Yeah, and, and it wasn't even, they didn't find him, it was like Bobby Bookout Diss. And it was this rap, God, I'm gonna make this disser, who, whatever his name is, famous right now. Don't even waste your time Googling this garbage. I wanted to go like, write a rap song just to go after this guy to defend the other Bobby book out, but see, anyway. <laughs> you know, too bad, I mean, Don L would have used Don, could have hooked that yeah, down, and yeah. tore that shit down, but. Anyway, no, yeah, that's what Bobby book out there, he's, he's a rapper, I wish him the best, I don't know where so, he's at. But. Yeah, so, uh, the white t-shirt, okay, this is not, uh, Bobby was like, I'm not gonna get dressed, I'm doing casual, this is, as this long as I've known him, no, man, that's, that's, and I was hoping, I was like, oh man, if he shows up and he does a white t-shirt, I'm going to be happy, because this is Bobby when he's on stage. This is, this is what you get. I had a conversation with my wife, she'll tell you it's anxiety and me panicking about what to wear, and she's like, and the Levi's. And, and the Levi's. <laughs> okay, I'll let my wife say, she, okay, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, which is kind of cool, I mean, you, you have, um, this no style, so I just wear a white well, t-shirt. Well, no, it's, well, but, that, but that's, that's your thing. That's the style. So, it man, is. I know it's he gets up on stage, and that's what he's going to be wearing. I know who that is. Um, so, that's it, just, yeah, the white t-shirt thing. And, of course, you're like, oh, um, he's happy. such a terrible, out-of-shape guy. Yeah, that's what the Navy does to you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and, and uh, I don't think I've ever said it before, but thank you very much for your service, oh, man. Yeah, I, it's... It's not just that you, what you did for our country, uh, for our freedom to like sit around and drink beer and bullshit and talk on cameras and act stupid or vote or not We're vote, all very, very lucky but yeah, yeah. But, because you do what you did. Um, and then on top of that, the fact that you're the Navy and that generated some music. It did, yeah. There's some songs that you did. Home was the, was the last, so Home, <coughs> Home's on the last record, on this most recent on the record. Okay. Home. So is Guns N' which is the only other. Nah, no, yeah, that's, that's home yeah, is. That's right. um, and neither, neither are really about the. I mean, it's, they're not about the military per se. Home, it's just your experiences. Yeah, home is about the last night I was in uh, Iraq, and we were. Uh, I just literally was waiting to come home, mm -hmm. and uh, one of my best friends, Tom, who was over there with me, he and I both sort of had this. I don't know. We, we actually started clicking because we we talked about this stuff and just. Um, just this idea that, you know, it wasn't, it's like weird to say this on camera, but like, I, I don't know, just this idea of like, all right, I, I was in a weird place in my life, and I was like, okay, I've had a good life, and probably, you know, kind of sketchy, so whatever, you know, and I just had this thing in my head where it's like, maybe I'm not coming back, and so at the end of all that, I was like, oh wow, this worked out, we're actually going home, and it was sort of this like roller coaster, and then uh, I talked about this the other night on Patrick's show. Yes, you did, and that's why. Patrick Davis. Yeah, big shout out to Patrick Davis. Patrick Davis. Thank First you time very much, sir. Heard my music on the radio. That was super awesome. That was, yeah. I listened to the cast, and that was awesome. So, And, and I heard you talking the story about home, so yeah. I'm happy you're telling us about it here. Yeah, so that was the thing. I it, it, it was like this super just surreal moment where time sort of slowed down in my brain, and I was like 24 hours away from coming home. Yeah, and I, I just remember vividly like looking in the mirror and going, ah, dang. How was, we, that wasn't that close, and, and it was just like, I just remember like, and the song sort of describes everything, and, and, well, but, but it was like, kind of cringing before each one else, the other one hit, and sort of heard it drift off in the background. Yeah, and so anyway, anyway, it was, and it's not really about, 
I think the military is as much as it is just about, uh, you know, me. anticipation. Yeah, and stuff that was going through my brain and 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 experience and sort of this place mindset I was at and, and this peace that came with accepting it and then this like feeling of relief when it's like, hey, I am going they to call you and you got to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so and then guns drawn. <clears throat> Man, dude, Guns Drawn is such an epic Thanks. fight. Look, y'all, Guns Drawn on the first album, what's the name of the first album again? Sorry, it's just did you. So it's just oh, Bobby yeah. Book. Bobby Book, okay. Uh, yeah, because I was all like, uh. It, it's on, on the album, it is a cappella. Yeah. And Bobby, you still do it live or no? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. But, and I, I did the foolish thing one night. And an old one to one down on Fifth Street. Yeah. And I, I think it was before you went on stage. Like, dude, can you really? I really would love to hear this, man. I've never heard you do, do it live. Can you do? And you're like, we do that all the time. And I was like, <laughs> what? To uh, Kevin Flat because Kevin uh, played horns on that song. On this, oh, uh, I could give a shout out to my whole band. I, I, and Go I, ahead, give a shout out to the whole. Wait, like, wait, wait, how long is the list of musicians in that freaking band? There, there are 19 people. Um, <laughs> can, on, you go, can you go through 19 people? Oh, uh, man, here we go. Put you on the spot, here we go. Yeah. 19 people. So, Chris Moore is my drummer, and Chris is amazing, and has played shows with me forever now. He was the third drummer after I came to Austin. Played drums on this record, we had Brandon Temple on the last record. Oh. I can't do it, this on the record, I don't think. Uh, yeah, who can afford Brandon Temple now? <laughs> Dude, Brandon's actually important. He's just amazing. It was like he's amazing. He's always on tour. With it the was really, yeah, it was one of those things where it's like, hey, you could come play drums on my record on Tuesday. You know, I went to school with Brandon. Brandon. Oh, did you he really? Was a freshman in high school when I was a senior. So, okay. so Brandon, uh, Brandon, Brandon, actually, the first time I saw him was at an Open Lord show, and and that was at um, what was that Maggie May or something like that? Uh, oh, uh, wow. It was it was some bar that is no longer open, and it was like right when I got to Austin, and I was like. It's the one and only time I've been in that bar, but I remember Brandon playing with like this super super yeah. tiny kid, <laughs> and, and then we it sound like yeah, and like Yogi was there, and Yogi hopped oh, on stage, and I want to say like I don't, I don't know what was going on, but I was so new to Austin, I didn't know any of these guys at the time. I don't even know, I didn't know Donnell that well back then. But uh, anyway, they let Brandon just start solo,ing and I was like, what just happened? Yeah. And it was like the tiny world's tiniest kit, and he was just. He's amazing. If you ever get the chance to watch Brandon Temple live, also, while we're talking about know. drummers, I don't even know what we're doing anymore. But I had half a beer. <laughs> Sniz from True Pro and Sniz, another. If you guys need to watch True Pro and Sniz, and I don't really work with any of those guys, so this is not a like an endorsed plug. Anthony Farrell played on my last record, but um, they are. Oh, that is some amazing local music. That is amazing music. Period. It doesn't matter much. Yeah. If you ever get to watch those guys play those Sniz. Just a sick, he's like a robot, he's like this funky, awesome, stiff robot. And tearing it up, you're like, what's he doing it like that? Have you ever seen like Common Club Gallery? They, they, they used to play there regularly on Wednesdays, and now they're playing. Oh, the gallery upstairs, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. God, they're sick. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, okay, so we got Chris, we got Brandon. Sorry, yeah, ADD. Uh, <laughs> so this Marsh played bass on both records. Um, not on every song, but on, uh, he played on a big chunk of both. Mm -hmm. um, Matt Slagle played bass on Matt Holmes record. Congratulations uh, on the baby, Matt. Yeah. Speaking of babies, Blake Atwell, who couldn't be here tonight. Because mm. he's at home with his baby. Aww. And uh, Barefoot Blake. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Kel Richardson, of course. Kale. Keenan Levick, another South Plains buddy of mine. Um, Scott, well, so, so Scott, who produced the record, also plays, mm -hmm. played on both records. His wife, Amy, amazing pianist. She's Oh, so musical, I, man, like, Amy's one of those people that makes you want to stop playing music. <laughs> um, did Cole play any uh, Cole, you know, so I almost, on that last, uh, po I, I did a post where I listed everybody, and I'm mm -hmm. probably going to need to cheat and get that post in a second. <laughs> Cole is the one, like, asterisk. Like, he was supposed to play, we had talked about a couple songs, and just never like, fell into place. Cole will for sure be on... Something with me very, very soon. He and I were talking about the release actually. He's such an amazing Cole is a uh, beast, man. Cole, he, he, it's funny, you know, I, like I write these songs, but Cole, so Chris has always been my go to guy for, you know, where we're at the song and we get like, oh, this stops there and blah, blah, blah. 
Cole has sort of become that guy. Cole, like, oh, really? I don't know the key to my song. My songs are in. Cole's like, you can tell me anything. And he's just, and he listens to it. And he's so and just on the ball, on point, and he does stuff, stuff, stuff that's so tasteful, and he just knows how to sit back and make the song better. And that's his, that's that's a skill in and of itself. And there's a handful of people, musicians that I know that know how to sit. They're not showboats. They know how to sit back and make a song better. Josh Brandenburg, if you're listening, Josh is another one. You guys don't know him. He's never played with me, but somebody I love to play with. And uh, Steve Williams, one of my old instructors, phenomenal guitar player and really good at just listening to the whole band and sitting back and going, what do I need to do to make to add everything to else sound better? I could get in front and kill everything right now, but I'm not. I'm doing whatever I need to do to make the whole to band the sound better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so we can take a, a beer break right now. Okay, That's a beer yours. break while we had questions. Uh, well, take a nap somewhere in the, in the a nap. <laughs> uh, we have a shout out to our uh, internet uh, audience. Uh, hi, Macy, Austin, mm. Pub Crawl, Lexus. We there's have those. watching right now. And, oh. well, there's more, but yeah. So, uh, <laughs> one of our uh, internet uh, guests, her name is Macy. She wanted to know if you could say hi to Richard. Hi, Richard. <laughs> Sure. Hey. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to so Bobby Bookout is really it's blues rock, Muddy Waters. It's just it's so how in in you're in Texas and country is king in Texas. How wh where did the blues rock infuse your soul? How did that happen? Where did the blues come from? Man, did for you? Yeah. Blues isn't everything, man. Blues isn't. I grew up on. Uh, you know, growing up in South Texas where I grew up, I grew up on a lot of um, country music and honestly, like, I don't know, Latin music were all around me. Like, oh, you got, on the first album, what, what, uh, is it Monster Way? What's the album? Monster Way, a little bit of Latin stuff too. Yeah. Remedy, Remedy, especially. Remedy. This song, this, this record has Imagine. Uh, that was a yeah. big, you know, and, and I was, at an impressionable age, that was a big influence for me. We used to cumbia around like Jim when I was in junior high school. <laughs> <and, and searching, laughs> uh, didn't you go back home? I don't want to say Bobby Bookout Day, but there was some sort of. <laughs> there should be Curtis of Springs a Bobby Bookout Day. Uh, <laughs> didn't you go? Uh, oh no no no! That was for um, when I played a show. Got it. There's yeah, so it was, was like a super big deal for me. Like getting to go home and play a show was so awesome. Uh, that was Fourth of July festival. Yeah. I heard you talk about. I've been on Patrick's show. I'm not gonna do. I really don't know if I'm gonna do any more full albums. Oh yeah, but I'm gonna. Yeah, so I think going to do a singles. I think no, no, no. So here's the thing: we're uh, we are the records. You know, being a dad, which is one of the best things that's ever happened to me, and being a husband also one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Yeah, correct. And uh, just kind of have a lot on our plate, and so it, it's a bit hard to juggle. Doing a full album is daunting. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Yeah, well, it only took eight years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just, I think I could be. I mean, it was awesome. It was kind of stifling because it was like I wanted. Dude, my phone is full of so many songs, and like every time I start a new one, I'm like, I need to finish this song, and it's like, no, 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 finish the record first. So I have so many songs that are started and not finished. So the thing, the thing is now is I just want to start making more. You know, I'm gonna write one or two songs at a time. Get, no. throw, get in the studio, put them out, and just keep putting music out. I keep putting music videos out is another thing. As much as I love the hard, tangible product of our hand, I, I applaud you and I agree 100% that, that that's what, you know, you doing, putting all of your labor and your love into this and, and getting this out of your head and on the to plastic now. And then going forward, you going ahead and doing like, ah, oh, let me go ahead and do a song or two. And... Um, and put it out on the internet, you know, and stream it and do a video for it with your brother with his, like, all of his new equipment he's buying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was funny to meet your brother that has a camera equipment that's going to be shooting your video. Yeah, so he's something he's a super artistic guy, and he has been curious about video. And uh, the first thing we did, uh, it was uh, a real close friend of mine, Marco Jellick, who uh, I went to with for a long time at Uchiko. Shout out to Uchiko. Uchiko. And, uh, Marco and I did those first two videos, and Marco is busy now. He's got his own band and stuff. He's trying to get out there. And Rod has well, wanted to do this. So I was like, dude, let's pick it up. Because I just want to. The point is, in all of this that we're talking about, is just to get music out there. Yes. 
<laughs> uh, and it'd be relevant and constant and current right. and c- continually putting products out. What do you mean just artistically? I just like, I want. What, what, I want it better. I want to write something and put it out. And write something and put it out. And not have to stifle yourself and like, oh, no, I can't. So And if so, more people will listen, if there's a visual, well, oh, that's good. And that's all. Will Tompkins, from me and everybody here at Three Beers and a Whiskey, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, make sure if you uh, like what you saw, you hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like what you saw, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe and also click on the notification bell so that you won't miss future videos from Three Beers and a Whiskey. Thank you all very much.